All right. So here is what part four. Um, still in that middle section, we were moving things around. These are a little bit different because these require you to do some predictions. So my advice to you would be if you can't do this in your head or what you have in your head is unsure, um, grab a piece of paper, grab a marker, write it on your desk so you guys can answer these type of questions really, really well. Um, so predict the effects of the transformation and by description rule. Just basically tell me where it's going to end up. So anyway, so we're in the coordinate plane. Now I'm telling you right here, you're going to have to tell me which axis or which quadrant. Now, if you don't know what I mean by quadrant, look it up or go back to me, part one of the key or the video uh, part one, and you'll understand what a quadrant's about. So um, let's see. So two, three is going to go undergo some transformations. Um, so it's important to note two, three right now, it'd be here in quadrant one. And so if it transforms four, five, that's plus four and then plus five. In other words, it's going to be, um, yeah, it's so in other words, it's going to be to the right four and then up five. Um, that should stay solidly in quadrant one. So it was here, now it should be like up here. So it's still quadrant one. Now the next thing that happens is this guy. So let's interpret this. Um, X days X, Y flips. So if Y is flipping, that's going to be a reflection. But it's going to be more important the reflection over the Y axis. So going back to our picture, it was here, it went here, now it's going to flip to this location here, so now we're end up in quadrant two. So the answer to this question is quadrant two. Okay, so really quick review. Uh, two, three, let me maybe do a little color coding here. Two, three is where we start, so that's two, three. Uh, once we do this first transformation, the four, five, it's going to end up right here. So it's going to move up four and then over five. And then our final transformation is a reflection. And that reflection, because it's minus y, will be over the y-axis. So the final movement will take it here. This is step three, which means quadrant two will be our answer. So this will end up solidly in quadrant two. Okay, same question. Um, again, we're going to do this by a progressive sketch. Like that seems to be a really good way for me to process it, so it might help you. Uh, zero 08 is right here, so that's where we're starting. Zero 08, zero 08. All right. So the next movement is a transformation. It doesn't give you, it doesn't tell you exactly what, but it does mention that it's in vector mota notation, which means this is going to move down 10. Um, but it's not going to move at all zero. So we're going to move straight up down 10. So if we move straight up down 10, we should end up at zero comma negative two. So it's still on the y-axis. And now we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. So this reflection, let's code it in blue. So this re reflection over the x-axis means this is the x-axis. It's going to flip up. So the last movement here will go from zero negative two, flip it up to zero comma two. And so that's where it ends up. So in other words, it's going to be on the y-axis. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, oh, back to 2, 3. Uh, so 2, 3, let's go ahead and draw this guy in. So 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 is here. Now it says it undergoes a dilation with center 0, 0, and k equals 4. So 0, 0 is here. k equals 4 means 4 times bigger. So if this was at 2, 3, now this should be at 4, 6. Well, to me, that solidly puts it into quadrant 1. All right, one last one, and we're done with this section. Uh, so first we have, okay, again, we have 3, 4. Approximately right there. And underwent a dilation with center 9, 12 and k equals a third. Wow, well that's pretty complicated. Um, let's go to pink here. So if I have a center of 912, 912 is like way up here, um, which means if that's the center, uh, 3, 4 is a certain distance from that center. Let me tap that in with light blue. Um, and it says now it's a dilation of k equals one third. Well, if I'm looking at k equals one third, that means it's one-third the distance. So I could probably figure this out by kind of looking at the distance from 3 to 9 as being like, what, up 6 over 8. 
and then cut those in thirds, and that will probably put me somewhere on this line. Uh, but since the question is really just asking me like what quadrant I'll be in, I just need to reason that it will end up somewhere here. Um, because, again, it's got to be a third of the distance that it currently is to 912, the center, because it's a center. So that's got to be a third of the distance to the center. So if this blue dotted line is currently the distance. Um, this orange guy right here, my guy, move with me. This orange guy has to be about a third of the distance, so it's probably closer to about right there. Okay. Um, either way, the question is what quadrant, and this would definitely be quadrant one. Now, interestingly enough, if this had been a positive number, I'm, like, I'm sorry, a whole number, like k equals 4, um, and this is just supposing. So if this was k equals 4, it would have taken this point and put it like over here, which would put it like in the third quadrant. But because the k factor is making things smaller, not bigger, um, because it's a third and not like 3, it actually will shrink that back towards the center of a dilation, and that's where that guy would end up. All right, A little bit more complicated where you have to kind of do some predicting. But again, if you notice, sketching was the key. So even though I'm not directly asking you to know how to sketch a translation, reflection, dilation, et cetera, for this section, if you don't know how to do it, you're probably going to be in big trouble. So I would say an important skill here, of course, understanding how these things work, but also understanding that you have to draw pictures to actually process this information, all right? Um, so that's it with what, part four, I think.